Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I've got a nice three-dimensional geometry problem to show you today. And a lot of times I think I do these geometry problems in maybe a much more difficult way than is necessary. But today I think my solution is pretty close to the simplest possible solution. So let's see what we have. We have a unit cube. So that means it's a cube where the side length is one. And then in the base of the cube, I've put a diagonal here. So this is in pink. And then on the right side of the cube, I've put a diagonal in blue here. And our goal is to find the distance between these skew diagonals. So I've redrawn the skew diagonals down here. So what does it mean to have the distance between two line segments, which is what we have here? Well, that'll be the shortest distance if we measure the distance along every possible point. But the nice thing is, is that the shortest distance will always occur along a vector or a line which is perpendicular to each of these line segments. So that's the strategy that we'll take here. Okay. In order to do that, I'm going to put this inside a three-dimensional sp space R3. So that means I'm going to assign coordinates to all of these vertices. I'll put the origin right here, so that'll be 0, 0, 0. And then this will be the x-axis going along this direction, so this will be the coordinate 1, 0, 0. Then the y-coordinate goes back here, so this will be the coordinate 1, 1, 0. And then finally the z-coordinate goes up in this direction, so this is the coordinate 1, 1, 1. So now those are all the points that we really need, although you could figure out what these remaining vertices are in terms of our coordinates, but like I said, that's not super necessary here. Okay, so let's maybe start with this pink line segment and parameterize that as a curve in R3. And we're gonna use maybe the following rule, and that is the line segment from P to Q, so in other words, starting at P and ending at Q can be parameterized by the following curve. So I'll write it as RPQ of T. So this is gonna be equal to one minus T times P plus T times Q. Where this isn't quite what we want, we really want P interpreted as a vector and Q interpreted as a vector instead of as a point. Okay, so like I said, that's what we'll use here. Now, let's give these guys names over here. Maybe we'll call this pink one L1 for line segment one, and we'll call this blue one L2 for line segment two. And now we'll parameterize each of these line segments. So let's first parameterize L1. Oh, and before we get started, I should point out that T here comes from the interval zero to one. And this works because if we plug in t equals zero, this bit collapses and we just have the point p, and vice versa if we plug in t equals one. The p part collapses and we just have the point q. Okay, so anyway, now we're gonna do r1 of t. So using this formula up here, we have one minus t times the starting point. The starting point is the origin here, so that doesn't really contribute anything. And then we have t times the ending point turned into a vector. So that'll look like this. We have t, t, zero. And here, like I said, we're gonna take t from zero to one. Okay, so that's good. Now let's parameterize L2. So that'll be R2. And I'm gonna use the parameter u instead of t here, just so that I really point out that these are parameterized separately. And so now we'll do, in this case, one minus u times the starting point. So it'll be one minus u times this. 
plus u times the ending point. So that'll be u times that. So after all is said and done, that gives us the equation or the vector 1 u u. And so here, notice this first entry is constant. So that's pretty interesting. So here we have u goes between 0 and 1. Now, before we move on, I'd like to make a couple of observations about these two. And we can, the observations I want to make is that they are parallel to certain vectors. So let's notice that this is parallel to the vector that is 1, 1, 0. Whereas this guy right here is parallel to the vector which is 0, 1, 0. One. And that's because you can think about these line segments as having kind of a starting point and then a direction. The starting point is given by the constants and then the direction is given by the stuff that's attached to the vectors. So that's pretty easy to see if we start at this point right here. What's changing from this point to this point is the 1, 1 coordinate and the second two entries. I've been using Squarespace for my personal academic website for several years and I couldn't be happier with the experience. It's super easy to achieve a beautiful result using wonderful templates that allow for drag and drop design. Squarespace also makes it very straightforward to access the source code if you want further customization, like the LaTeX integration that you can see on my website. I'm currently on my annual summer rock climbing trip and I've been using the Squarespace mobile app to check in on my site. This app is very well designed and not only allows you to check analytics, but also features website building tools in app. Personally, I'm considering resurrecting my old climbing blog using this feature. So keep on the lookout for that. So what are you waiting for? Go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And one more time, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And so now let's sketch up a little bit about what the line segment with shortest length would look like between these two. So this is going to get a bit tricky. I don't want to make it too messy, but it would look something like this. So it would maybe go through this line segment at this point and then go down to this line segment at this point. And like I pointed out before, it will intersect each of these at a right angle. So we need that to be a right angle and we also need this one right here to be a right angle. So since this is in three dimensions, this one doesn't really look like a right angle, but we'll just kind of have to take that for what it is. Okay, great. So what we really want is that the vector, which is parallel to this line segment joining these at a shortest distance, is perpendicular to both line segments. But if it's perpendicular to both line segments, then it's going to be parallel to the cross product of these. Given that the cross product of these gives a vector which is perpendicular to each of the individual line segments that we're building it up. Okay, so in other words, we need a vector parallel to, like I said, the cross product of these two. So that'll be 1, 1, 0, cross 0, 1, 1. So we use kind of the standard matrix version of the cross product. So I'll put my unit basis vectors up there, i, j, k. Now I have 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then doing the calculation, we'll get that this is equal to the vector 1 and then negative 1, 1. Let's recall that we get this first entry by doing the cofactor expansion about this column and this row, taking the determinant of this submatrix, that gives us one, and then we move down the line. So we get the second one by doing that cofactor expansion, the determinant is one, but a minus sign is built in the cross product, and similarly for the last column. So next up, we want to calculate a vector between two points on this curve. So let's maybe call this point up here, maybe we'll call it A, and this point down here, B. So the vector between A and B will be given by the difference between these two vectors. So that'll be T minus 1, T minus U, and then minus U. 
Okay, so that's the vector between these two line segments. Or I guess the vector in the direction of the line segment between these two diagonals. And in order to minimize this, this vector has to be perpendicular to each of the diagonals. In other words, parallel to this vector. So we want it to be, like I said, parallel to this vector. So it should be a scalar multiple of this vector. So it should be of the form C minus C, C. So that's a scalar multiple of that vector. But that sets up a system of equations. Notice we have this C is the same as this C. So that means T minus one is the same thing as minus U. That gives us our first equation. We have T minus one equals U, which we could maybe rewrite as T plus U equals one. And then let's see what else we have. We have this is the negative of this. So that means we could write t minus u is equal to negative c, but that'll be negative negative u, which is u. And so that sets up, let's see, maybe t minus 2u is equal to 0. So something like that. And now we've got a system of two equations and two unknowns. We can solve for the appropriate parameters. Maybe we'll multiply this equation by 2 and then add them. That'll cancel out the u part. And we'll end up with 2t plus t, which is equal to 3t equals 2, because we've got 2 times 1. So that means we have t equals 2 thirds, but that means our coordinate a, well, I guess our coordinate b, because that's L1, is equal to, let's see, 2 thirds two-thirds, zero. So that's our coordinate for B. And then similarly, we can plug two-thirds back in here, and we'll see that U is equal to one-third. But that gives us our coordinate for A, which is the point right here on L2, and that's gonna be equal to one, one-third, one-third, by our parametrization of our second line. But now, because we found the line segment between L1 and L2, which is perpendicular to each, that will achieve the minimum possible distance. And so that's all we need to do is find the distance from A to B using the distance formula. So that'll be the square root of, let's see, one minus two thirds squared, and then plus two thirds minus one third squared plus one-third squared. So that's, like I said, just using the distance formula. That's a pretty easy calculation, and what we'll end up with is the square root of 3 over 3. And that's our final answer. So that's the distance between these two skew diagonals, and that's a good place to stop.